Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the one thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Many of you may recognize that as the words from Steve Jobs and Apple's famous Think Different speech, which was also the inspiration for my, for my talk with you today. My name is India Gregory, and I'm a student at the Academy of Math, Engineering, Technology, and Science at Olympic High School. And I could tell you that since Olympic has begun this program, all five schools have been designated as schools of excellence and distinction. I could tell you that four out of five small schools have made Newsweek's list of top 6% best high schools in America. I could even tell you that since this program has begun, end of course testing scores have risen an amazing 65%. But I believe the true proof can be found in the stories of the students that attend Olympic, the crazy ones who have been inspired to think different. And so I will share a few stories with you. Let's take a look at a third grade classroom. Most educators and teachers know this as a gateway year, and most CMS kids know this as their first introduction to the EOGs. This is the first year that this end of grade test begins to count. But I also want to tell you the story of a student who hated math. The student doesn't get it, doesn't understand it. It's boring and repetitive because this student feels like ultimately they're just learning a strategy of how to best narrow down multiple choice answers. Educators know this as a gateway year because studies actually show that a child's level of overall success can be determined by their performance in the third grade. And so that student struggled. And ultimately ended up getting a low three on the exam that year. Now when you hear the story of a student who struggled so early on in math and just really grappled with that concept, you said that they're probably not going to be that successful later on. Well, I'm going to contrast that. Let's now imagine that this same student is taking calculus too. Let's imagine that this student has interned for two Fortune 500 engineering companies. Let's even go as far as to say that this student has participated in building robots and knows how to program and write code. You would say there's no way a student who struggled so early on in basic math isn't supposed to be, able to, to be able to accomplish any of those things. But maybe that story isn't so crazy because that student was actually me. You see, my main problem in elementary and middle school and why I didn't understand uh, why I had struggled so with math was because I, like most students, because I, like most students, couldn't connect the dots. I couldn't see the relevancy behind what we were learning in class. It turned out to be a combination of four teachers teaching the boring test and Bored students learning a testing strategy. You see, learning becomes infinitely easier when you see a point or a reason for it. And more times than not, a student's going to look at a concept with a little more open-mindedness and willingness when they feel that what they're doing and what they're learning has meaning and value. So when it first clicked for me, I was in the ninth grade entering Olympic High School as a freshman. And the, uh, the idea of career-based schools was an entirely new concept for me. I had five options. Okay, <laughs> the School of Renaissance and its focus on the arts, the School of International Business and Communications, the School of Business, um, International Business and Communications, the School of Global Studies and Economics, or the Academy of Math, Engineering, Technology and Science, or the School of uh, Biotechnology, Health and Public Administrations. And at the time, a lot of my peers were going to Met, so I thought that because, you know, my peers were going, maybe it would be a good idea for me to go as well. And I knew that because of the rigorous courses that were offered, my parents would be pleased also. And I recall it was one of the first groups that I got involved with at the school was the US First Robotics Club. And as its name implies, it's a club where students get together and they build robots. I remember how this came about because I was walking down the hallway with a friend of mine and he saw a poster and suggested that we join the club. And I was absolutely mortified at that concept because, well, I was the girl who hated math, so the idea of joining a club where you applied those concepts was absolutely terrifying. But I decided to give it a try. And as it turned out, a lot of the kids in the club struggled with the same things that I did. We had our advisors who were comprised of 
CMS teachers, engineers, and um, parents as well. And they guided us, but they didn't just tell us how to do it. There was no real direct path to just finding out how to build you know, the perfect robot. And you couldn't just Google it or look it up online either. We had the first rule book and a few other guidelines, but that was about it. So it all started out very trial and error. We all sat down with the advisors, and it just started tossing ideas around, like a giant brainstorming session, if you will. And if you didn't know how to do something, you researched it first yourself, talked to others about it, and tried different methods and ways to arrive at a concept or an idea that would work. But there was no real direct path to just finding the right answer, and people didn't just tell you. So critics would call that unorganized and say that it's not structured enough for school and for the learning environment. But it turns out to work very well. We were learning how to apply math and physics, work with mechanics, use simple circuitry and write simple code, and we turned out to love it. So it's programs like that that get kids enthusiastic about what they're learning and ultimately ended up fueling my interest in engineering because now there's a point to what we're learning. We're excited to open the textbook because we're able to make a connection between what we're reading and how it's applied in the real world. Another example among many programs like this that are available at Olympic is in the carpentry classes that students can take. The main project worked on throughout the year is the Habitat for Humanity home, where students actually get to build a house for a family and a community. And now at first it turns out it'll be a little scary because you know you have teenagers building a house that actual people are going to live in. But it turns out to work very well. Part of the class has been inside the classroom, reading the textbook, learning all the skills and getting the material that they're going to need to use out of the Habitat home. And then the other half of the class has been out of the house, using their hands, getting their hands dirty, and applying the skills that they learned in the classroom. So it's programs like that that are used to reinforce what kids are learning in class. And this also helps drive interest about content because students understand that what they're doing has value and purpose and can be applied beyond just sitting at a desk. So with not for this kind of environment, I would have never been given to, uh, chosen to explore the autonomous robotics camp at North Carolina State University. Nor would I have ever chosen to attend the DigiGirls camp at Microsoft a year later. If not for teachers helping to make the connection between classroom and career, I would have never chosen to explore two semesters of Yeti Community Robotics Club at CPCC. If not for the teachers, the courses, and collaborative partnerships that Olympic has built with businesses in the Southwest community, I would have never been given the opportunity to intern for Siemens, at where twice a week I got to go to uh, take classes at Central Piedmont, and then the other days of the week I actually got to go to the Charlotte plant and shadow engineers and workers. And further, without my collective experiences, rigorous schedule, and success in advanced placement courses, I would not be currently working for Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories, where I work as, as a design and drafting intern. The Olympic community is a huge example of a school that offers the opportunity for authentic learning in, in all of its courses and programs. And I am very thankful for Bill Gates and for other people like him who have invested in Olympic success. Being a student in the Olympic community has also given me the opportunity to take many courses that aren't available to most students in CMS. I've been able to take engineering design development, drafting, computer integrated manufacturing, computer programming, civil engineering and architecture, just to name a few courses. And these opportunities may have been available through my, may have been made available through my small school, but many other students in the Olympic community enjoy some of these same experiences as well. So what you see at our school is multiple students and many students doing well and succeeding. And this has everything to do with the way the learning environment is set up. Bill Gates famously said, our high schools were designed 50 years ago to meet the needs of, of another age. And until we design them to meet the needs of the 21st century, we will keep limiting and even ruining the lives of millions of American students. Well, Olympic has taken Bill Gates' philosophy and is heeding it, daring to put words into action and to think differently. So I want to leave you with this thought. I am one of the many lucky students in the Olympic community who have been fortunate enough to come in contact with some of the crazy ones that Steve Jobs mentions in this commercial. They were the teachers and the administrators who were crazy enough to look at education differently and believe that they could influence the lives and minds of many young students. So the essence of TED is ideas, is ideas worth spreading. Keep in mind the words of Bill Gates and the ideology of Steve Jobs because we all need to think differently and act urgently in our approach to how today's children are being educated. So on behalf of my fellow CMS students and those across the nation, I challenge everyone here this morning, educators and business organizations alike, think different. Find innovative ways to work within the community and partner. 
Make material and education relevant and authentic. Find ways to bring us into the workplace and ultimately influence our futures for the better. Thank you.